Listen, these are pivotal, especially if you're struggling to lose weight and lose belly fat. But start getting excited because you can crush your weight loss goals right now. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to Choosing My Health. If this is your first time here, I'm Elisa. I'm a health coach, holistic nutritionist, and plant-based food instructor. And I teach you how to easily transition to a whole food plant-based lifestyle and thrive. On this channel, I share plant-based education, recipes, and encouragement. So if that's your vibe, please consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. So if you wanna lose weight and keep that thing off, keep watching because I'm back with part two of the two-part series, Vegan But Still Overweight. Today, I'm gonna give you even more reasons why you're not losing weight on a vegan or plant-based diet and of course, what you can do about it. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna share a not so obvious and pretty sneaky way those extra pounds creep in and slow down fat loss. And as always, at any point during the video, you can check out uh, the YouTube description box for all the links and resources I talk about in this video as well as additional resources. All right, you ready? Let's go. <laughs> Under eating as a cause for weight gain sounds backwards because it's pretty common knowledge that if you eat less calories than you burn, you'll lose weight. However, when you chronically under eat, say for instance, when you're dieting over time, two things can happen. Number one, your hormones are altered, especially cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that comes out let's say when you're having a really bad day at work, when you're sick, but it also comes out when you're not getting enough calories on a daily basis or when your body is stressed because you're severely undernourished. I'm the body and you ain't feeding me. Cortisol gets to work, Bobo. So when you're under high stress, cortisol levels increase and increased cortisol levels not only make it hard to lose weight, but they can also promote weight gain, especially visceral fat, you know, that dreaded belly chub. Number two, when you chronically under eat, your muscle mass decreases from protein malnutrition, which causes you to start to reactively binge eat because your body is now trying to overcompensate for what it doesn't have. I'm the body and you still ain't feeding me. Do you hear my belly? I'm about to revolt. How do you avoid this? Well, first, worry less about calorie restriction and more about getting a full spectrum of food from the plant-based rainbow. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, legumes, tubers, nuts, and seeds. Also make sure that you journal what you're eating so you can see exactly what you're doing and what you're not doing. Now this next point is the reason why a lot of people plateau in their weight loss. <laughs> First off, child, let's state the obvious. You can't be sitting around eating vegan cookies and hoping and praying to lose weight, but you won't even take a 10 minute walk around the block. Listen, I ain't throwing shade. We've all been there, you know, one way or the other. But when it comes to weight loss, vegan or not, you can't neglect physical activity. And the type of physical activity you put in makes a difference. Y'all ever wonder why you can do cardio forever, like you're at the gym 24 seven and a day, brisk walking on the treadmill, but you ain't gonna lie. You really don't see a difference in your size. A for effort. But you see, this is one of those things where you're working hard, but you ain't working smart. Because here's the thing about cardio, it's good. It's gonna help you stay healthy. But when it comes to weight loss, not all cardio is the same. Okay, so what's the best type? Research shows that doing interval-based cardio is more effective than doing steady-state cardio. Yeah, that's true. High-intensity interval training, or HIT is when you alternate intense periods with lower-intensity periods to recover, like alternating between light jogging and sprints. Low-intensity cardio is when you take a brisk, 30 minute walk, for example. Again, very helpful for overall health, but not as effective for weight loss. Now, if you wanna take it up a notch, add in some strength training. These are exercises that build muscle. Why is this important for weight loss? I'll take this one, honey, because strength training, whether using your own body weight or lifting weights, helps you lose fat all while you're still building muscle. 
And muscle mass burns more calories than fat, even while you're sleeping. Now you know. So if you combine high intensity interval training with strength training on top of your plant-based, a lifestyle, listen, it's about to go down. No pun intended. Okay, so I know sometimes it's hard to eat right and on top of that to find time to exercise, mercy. But sometimes all we need is a little encouragement to take one step forward. So can you help me do something? Can you write just a few words of encouragement in the comments for someone who's struggling, who's about to throw in the towel? Someone is gonna read them and it may be the very thing they need to keep going. Let's go ahead and show some love today. All right, now for this next point. If you nail this next one, baby, you're golden. Sleep just seems so elusive, especially if you got a baby waking up at night. My current situation. If sleep is not a part of your weight loss equation, what you waiting on? Here's what happens when you don't sleep. Two things. One, when you're sleep deprived, your brain's frontal lobe begins to dullen. Your frontal lobe is the epicenter of decision-making and impulse control. When this happens, you make impulsive decisions, not always the best ones. And on top of this, your brain's reward center supercharges. And now here you are looking for something that feels good. How about them food cravings? Chances are, you're gonna say yes to binging on the processed snacks, yes, even the ones that say plant-based, or grab that sugar-filled latte for breakfast for extra energy. You might be able to control yourself and say no to these when you're rested, but when you're not, your brain is gonna mess with you and thrust you to make impulsive decisions. And two, sleep deprivation spikes cortisol levels, and cortisol then tells your body to hold on to the fat because it's energy to keep you awake because you're gonna be groggy all day. I'm the body. So you don't want to sleep. Okay, well, you ain't losing the fat because I'm tired. It's my feel right now. In fact, researchers found that when people who diet cut back on sleep over a two week period, they felt hungrier, less satisfied. After eating, they had like no energy and the amount of weight they lost from fat dropped by over 50%, so way less fat loss. By the way, if these tips are helpful, go ahead and smash the like button. That would be so appreciated. Now here's what you can do if you can't sleep. Number one, get to bed at a good time. Research suggests that the best time to sleep is at 10 p.m. However, more important than a suggested time is consistency. So your goal should be to sleep at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every day so you help your circadian rhythm. And that's a tiny internal clock that we have that basically helps your body to regulate sleep. And depending on your needs, you should aim for about seven to nine hours. And number two, establish other sleep time routines. So stop the late night snacking, turn off all the social media, the TV, your computer, because these things are gonna interfere with your ability to fall asleep, honey, and keep you up past midnight. We don't need that. Okay, you ready for this next point? It's a little sneaky. You might be vegan or plant-based and still overweight because you're consuming too much sodium and your body is trying to hold on to the water so you don't turn into a pillar of salt. Water weight is a real thing. For every 400 milligrams of sodium, your body holds on to an extra four cups of water. That's about two pounds. So how much sodium can you have? So while 2,300 milligrams a day is the recommended sodium intake limit, the American Heart Association is moving toward an ideal limit of 1,500 milligrams a day. But if you're consuming tons of processed food, honey, you'll go way over that number before you know it. So if for breakfast, you decide that in addition to your smoothie and your toast, you're gonna throw in two veggie links, all right? That's 1,200 milligrams of sodium. Mind you, I'm only talking about the veggie link sausages. Then for lunch, you decide, hey, I'm gonna have one packet of dehydrated onion soup mix. That's another 3,132 milligrams of sodium. And for dinner, you make stir fry and you add one tablespoon of soy sauce to that bad boy. That's about 879 milligrams of sodium right there. At the end of the day, you stacked over 5,000 milligrams of sodium and your body has held on to at least 12 cups of water, which equals to about six pounds. Now imagine if you ate like this every day. No wonder it's hard to lose the weight, boo. So what do you do? Cut down on the salt and you'll cut down on that extra weight too. 
But don't think you have to sacrifice good flavor in your meals. Instead, maybe try using some lemon juice to pop flavor, or maybe more herbs and seasonings, and before you know it, your taste buds will adjust to lower salt levels. If you're struggling with those stubborn pounds, pay attention to how much you're eating because it's not just overeating that can mess you up. Under eating can do the same. And make sure you're putting in the work with the right type of exercise and take time to sleep. Oh, and watch the sodium to avoid the water weight. I hope these tips help you pinpoint the cause of those stubborn pounds so you can get back in shape and get your body working optimally while enjoying all the goodness that comes with a plant-based lifestyle. And hey, listen, even if you need to lose weight, the goal is not skinny, right? The goal is healthy. Please subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't yet. And thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Also, click or tap right here for part one of this two-part series, Vegan But Still Overweight, for even more tips so you can slay those pounds. Hope you have an amazing day. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.